What is up, Tang Gang? This is a different kind of video from what I usually make, but I have a lot of leftover knowledge and strategy that I want to share with you guys from when I was studying for my MCAT. So what I'm going to do is walk you through um, how I would approach an MCAT question of the day. And um, yeah, depending on y'all's response, I may make this into a series of videos. Um, but let's get into this question. I'll let y'all read it first. So immediately I see melting temperature. Whenever I see melting temperature, I'm thinking stability. If we want to measure the stability of something, we see how much heat do I need to add to this structure to denature it, to ruin it. So the less heat that I need to put in to ruin it, um, the, the less stable it probably was to start with. And so if this question is asking which of the strands has the lowest melting temperature, it's asking how, which, which one of these requires the least amount of heat to be denatured. And so I'm looking for the most unstable. Okay. What in the first place holds DNA strands together? Um, nucleotides. Nucleotides share hydrogen bonding, right? And we know that A goes with T and C goes with G. I'm drawing these lines between them to remind us that between A and T nucleotides, there are two hydrogen bonds, but between C and G, there are three. And if we want a visualization, I'll quickly show you this image from Google, um, but that's what the hydrogen bonds look like in terms of um, like which functional groups are bonding um, between the nucleotides. Okay, that's not extremely important here, but it's always great to visualize. Um, so now looking at our answer choices, what are we looking for? We're looking for the lowest percentage of um, C, G base pairs because C, G base pairs have three, nucle nu three hydrogen bond um, attractions between them, uh, which is more stable than the two in AT. And so whatever strand has more CG base pairs um, will be more stable and whatever has less will be less stable. Okay, so now let's look at the answer choices and what information they give us. So 20% thymine, well, that doesn't really tell us about, it doesn't seem to tell us about the relative proportions of CG and AT base pairing. But it actually kind of does, because if we remember that for every A nucleotide on one strand, there's going to be a T nucleotide on the other strand, right? Um, and for every C nucleotide on one strand, there's going to be a G nucleotide on the other strand. So A and T have a 1 to 1 ratio correspondence, and C and G do as well. Awesome, so we know this stuff. So we can say that for answer choice A, that's also telling us that we have 20% we have of A, giving us a cumulative of 40% AT base pairing. Okay, that also tells us that we have a cumulative of 60% CG because that's just the what's left. Okay, answer choice B. 25% cytosine tells us that we also have 25% guanine, oops, which tells us we have a cumulative of 50% CG base pairing. So from A, A and B, we already know that B is a better choice because it has a lower um, proportion of CG base pairing. Next choice, 30% guanine gives us also 30% cytosine which tells us we have cumulative 60% CG base pair. A and C are essentially the same, and so we can say they're wrong because they can't be both correct. Finally, answer choice D, 35% adenine, tells us we also have 35% thymine, which tells us 70% AT, and then 30% CG. Okay, so now I know that D has to be the most unstable because we have the least percentage of stable base pairing. So I'm gonna choose D 
And that is the correct answer. If you want to see this company's explanation, you can go on mcatquestion.com um, if it's helpful. I think I used the same reasoning as they did. Um, but yeah, I hope this is somewhat helpful, not only for you guys who are taking the MCAT, but also for people who maybe want to, I don't know, get ahead in their science classes or something or review. Um, but yeah, I kind of enjoyed making this video. So if you want to see more, just let me know in the comments and um, I'll continue making videos outside of MCAT tutoring and yeah, outside of this stuff. But I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, Tank Gang.